Hello everyone, this is Chowren, and today I'll teach you what you need to know to defeat Haleon in Ruby Sanctum on 25 player heroic difficulty. For this fight, you're going to want 3 tanks, 5 healers, a holy priest, and at least a couple hunters and boomkins. The rest of the DPS you bring doesn't matter so much as long as you can AoE when you need to. Let's start with an overview of the fight. This encounter begins with 3 mini bosses and no more than 1 or 2 trash bulls. The first mini boss is called Baltharis the Warborn. In addition to cleaving and doing periodic knockbacks, he creates clones of himself. Since the clones do the same cleave damage, you have to be careful where you stand. Most groups will just blow heroism or bloodlust on this mini boss to get him out of the way. Use two or three tanks for this mini boss since you have many adds to deal with and you should already have three tanks anyway. Sevyana Ragefire is the next mini boss. She does a flame breath and has an enrage that should be trank shotted. And in addition, she does Flame Beacon, which targets 6 players, and does damage to them and anyone near them. To deal with this, just stack up and let the Mark people move out of the raid group. There is a bug with this mini boss, in that if you taunt her while she is in the air, she'll come back down. But my understanding is that this is the kind of thing that can get your raid banned, so I advise against it. This is a really easy mini boss, it's not worth the risk. After her, there is a small trash pack. All you need to know here is that the Char Scale Commander has to be tanked away from the rest of the adds because they cast an ability called Rallying Cry, which will buff the other adds. Think of it as sort of a prelude to what to expect for Haleon. The last mini boss is General Zerithrian. He has an armor reducing ability, an AoE fear, and summoned adds to him. Again, just use three tanks, two for adds, one for the boss. Don't fear ward anyone but the tank, because anyone who is not feared by his intimidating roar will immediately get aggro. Once he dies, Haleon will appear, and you can start the boss. Haleon is a twilight dragon with all of the normal trappings of a dragon raid boss. Nearly every dragon-like raid boss in the game does a cleave, a tail swipe, and some kind of a breath attack, and Haleon is no exception. Don't stand in front of the boss unless you are a tank, and don't stand behind. The area you will fight him in is a circular raid area that is encompassed in fire once the boss is pulled. You will want to fight him from your max melee range for reasons we'll get into later, but it shouldn't be an issue since Haleon has a humongous hitbox. Haleon's fight consists of three phases, which take place in two realms. Phase 1 takes place entirely in the physical realm, which is called Up Top. Phase 2 takes place entirely in the realm of Twilight, which is also called Down. Phase 3 takes place in both realms simultaneously. Let's start with Phase 1. Please excuse my poor Microsoft Paint skills, but this image is basically how you want to position yourself on the pole. The light gray area is where Melee will stand, with ranged a bit farther back. Do not stand in the very outermost edge, however, as this area will quickly become hazardous. The boss can move forward a little bit when the tank pulls in, so you're not going to be dead center. This means that there will be some room in the back for your ad tank to hang out until he or she is needed. During the first phase, and in phase 3 as well, Haleon will use two primary special abilities and will do fire damage. The first ability is called Meteor Strike. He will call down a meteor to strike one of your raid members, which will be indicated by a glowing icon on the ground. When this happens, you want to move through the boss, being careful to avoid cleaves and tail swipes to the other side. As you do so, you want your hunters to place frost traps in a line heading to your new location. Anyone who is still standing on the icon when it hits will almost certainly die. Fire will then emanate from the impact location, which you will also want to avoid. Think Marogar or Archimond. This is the reason that you want to stay at max melee range, so when you run through the boss, you can keep as much distance between yourself and where the meteor strikes as possible. In addition to fire, two types of adds will spawn. The small adds are called living embers and will need to be AoE down, and the reason you place frost traps on the ground is to slow them down so they don't kill all of your AoEers. Using a druid's knockback will also be crucial here, as even with two or three frost traps, they will still reach your raid if you don't knock them back. The other add that will spawn is called Living Inferno, and this is where your third tank comes in handy. This add doesn't do much damage by itself, 
but just as with the char scale commander, it is dangerous because it will buff its allies. Keep it away from living embers. You can banish it if you wish, but it's simpler just to use three tanks. Warlocks can only banish one target at a time. So to deal with phase 3, you'd need several of them, and their banishes would have to be timed perfectly to keep the Infernos from running rampant and buffing the Embers, and then killing your raid. If you don't use a third tank, you will probably have to have your main tank pick up the Infernos. Again, pardon my lousy Microsoft Paint skills, but this is basically the way your raid should be configured immediately after Meteor Strike hits. Sometimes Meteor will bug out. I have not confirmed this, but my understanding is that Freezing Trap will bug it. Again, intentionally doing this is the kind of thing that will get you banned, and since the boss really isn't that tough, I highly advise that you refrain from bugging this encounter. Moreover, if it doesn't bug out, you are screwed, because Freezing Trap only affects one mob. Regardless, even when you aren't using Freezing Trap, the meteors will occasionally fail to work correctly. I'm really not sure what causes this. The other ability that Halion will use in Phase 1 is Combustion. This works just like on normal difficulty. When you get the debuff, you want to run out of the raid group and either dispel yourself or wait for one of your healers to do it. It can be dispelled by just about any ability that will remove a curse or magic. The longer you wait to dispel Combustion, the more powerful its magnitude becomes. However, it does AoE damage and knockback effect to anybody nearby so you don't want to dispel it before the player afflicted by it has a chance to run out of the raid. Therefore, quick reaction times become key to dealing with this mechanic. The reason you don't want players standing on the edge of the raid area is so that your combustions can be safely dispelled without blowing up any of your raid members into flames or fiery breath attack. For you mages out there, be careful with blink for this debuff. Another bug that I found on this fight is that it is possible to blink through the flame wall and outside of the raid area. It might sound cool, but it actually sucks because when it's time for the phase transition, you are stuck outside of the raid area and will have to wait for Blink to come off cooldown before you can teleport back in. I'm not sure if this is the kind of thing you can get banned for or not, since it often happens by accident, but I advise you use extreme caution when using Blink during this fight. When Halion reaches 75% of his health, he will move into the realm of Twilight, and Phase 2 will begin. Before zoning in, make sure everyone is topped off and rezzed, and hot your tanks up. The Physical Realm tank can just kind of hang out up top for this part, along with a healer who can use Guardian Spirit. In Phase 3, Halion won't attack in the Physical Realm until he's engaged, just like Synagosa, Rotface, Fester Gut, Blood Prince Council, etc. Here is another Microsoft Paint drawing for you. You want your tank to position the boss as close to dead center as they can. Everyone in your raid should create this macro, which will enable you to zoom much farther out than you would ordinarily be able to do. The reason you want to do this is so that you can see the orbs that will be rotating around the edge of the raid area. On normal difficulty, there are only two orbs, but on heroic, you'll have to keep track of four. One of the abilities that Halion uses is called Twilight Cutter. When used, the rotating orbs will be connected by two shadowy beams forming a pair of perpendicular diameters across the raid area. Touch these cutters and you will die, and the orbs will continue to rotate, so you have to keep moving. However, Halion will still tail swipe you if you stand behind him, stunning you and probably preventing you from escaping the cutter. Stand in front of the boss and you'll either die to cleave or to dark breath. Therefore, the only safe place to stand is to his side. You will want to compensate for lag. It's better to think of yourself as following behind the cutter moving away from you instead of trying to stay away from the one that's approaching. Latency might make you think you have more time than you really do. To deal with this boss's dragon abilities and the cutters at the same time, your phase 2 tank will need to rotate the boss. However, it isn't necessary to rotate the boss continuously. You only need to rotate him for upcoming cutters. This basically amounts to every other pass of the orbs. It may take a few tries before everyone is familiar with the timing. Most people should be familiar with this mechanic, as it is exactly like it is on normal difficulty, with the sole exception of the additional cutter. The other ability that Halion uses is called Consumption. It, like Combustion in the physical realm, is exactly the same on normal and heroic difficulty. The two abilities are actually very similar. 
while, as the names might imply, combustion blows more raid members away, consumption sucks them back in. Because the ability affects the position of your raid members, it's really crucial that you move to dispel quickly out of the raid group. If you dispel a consumption badly, you can drop your whole raid into the path of a cutter. At 50% of his total health, Haylin will use Twilight Division and Phase 3 will begin. You must now split your raid into two groups to fight Haylin, both in the physical and twilight realms, at the same time. All of the mechanics for both realms will be in effect, and two new things will become relevant. The first part is relatively trivial, and has actually been in effect the entire raid, except that you won't really notice it until Phase 3. What will happen in Heroic that doesn't happen on Normal is that the ground effects of consumption and combustion will show up in both realms. This means, for example, that a bad combustion dispel up top in the physical realm can make dodging cutters extremely difficult for those down below in the twilight realm. The reason this is trivial is that everyone should be running all the way to the edge for each dispel anyway, so you shouldn't have to worry about it. The other thing you should know about phase 3 is corporeality. I found that very few people on this server understand or even know about corporeality, so I'm going to explain it to you. This is a graph of how corporeality works. You push corporeality when one realm's DPS exceeds the others. On the pole, Haleon will be split halfway into the physical and halfway into the twilight realm, 50-50. Think of corporeality as a sliding scale, and this 50-50 state will be the center point. In this initial, bound state, he neither does nor takes any additional damage, nor does he do or take reduced damage. However, once you begin to move one way or the other, you'll find that in one realm, he will begin to do less damage as well as taking less damage, while in the opposite realm, he will do more damage but will also take more damage. To put it simply, when you push corporeality, you reduce the magnitude of the damage done and the damage taken in one realm while simultaneously increasing the magnitude in the opposite realm. However, the two realms do not experience the same level of change. For a clear example, let's say you push the boss to 20% corporeality, which means he's at 80% in the other realm. You will be taking half as much damage as you would at the balance, and you will be doing 30% less damage to the boss. In the other realm, they will be taking twice the normal damage, that is to say 100% more damage than normal, but they will also be able to do 60% more damage to the boss. You can do more damage if you are willing to pay the price of taking more damage, and if you take less damage, you will also do less damage. We try to use this to our advantage. When we reach 50%, the beginning of phase 3, we don't let anyone go into the physical realm. Not until we reach 40% and corporeality has begun to really hurt our DPS in the Twilight Realm do we allow our physical realm group to go up. Now in the physical realm they find the boss very weak to damage and can open up with a bloodlust and drop him very quickly. The tank for the physical realm has to be very well geared and will still need to roll cooldowns and have a guardian spirit ready. Three out of five of our healers will go up top to heal the tank and the raid group. Meanwhile, down below in the realm of twilight, our corporeality is balanced out. It will begin to reverse since much of the top group's damage will now be directed towards living infernos and embers. Our job down here is to push the boss as hard as we can. The reason we do this is to speed up phase 3. It is by far the longest and hardest phase since you have to deal with all of the mechanics of both realms but with less people in either realm. We kill the first few infernos and then we let the off tank pick up the rest while we push the boss. The timing for when to push will vary based on your group so you must use your best judgment. To do as much damage as you can, try to time your cooldowns well. It's always a good idea to pre-pot, and you need to try and time your cooldowns to match important moments during the fight. As I've already mentioned, it's best to use Bloodlust in Phase 3, where you'll need as much damage as you can get. Unless you have two shamans, however, players in the Twilight Realm won't receive this buff. Once Phase 3 starts, wait to use your cooldowns if you're going to push Corporeality. You'll start to do less damage as you push Haleon farther into the physical realm. Therefore, using your cooldowns would be a waste. Those going up can pop all of their cooldowns for a huge surge of damage up top along with Heroism or Bloodlust. Those down below 
will want to wait until the first meteor above splits the raid group's DPS up top and sends Halion farther again into the Twilight Realm to use their cooldowns. The timeline shows you when it's safe to use your cooldowns depending on which group you are in. This is all you need to know to kill this boss. The true challenge is assembling 25 players that know this fight and are geared enough to do it. After that, all you have to do is practice until you get it. I wish everyone going for it the best of luck and hope to see many kills in the future. Thank you for watching. If you want more tutorials, check out my YouTube channel at Chowron85. If you are looking to enjoy Wrath of the Lich King content, you're welcome to play with us here at MoltenWild.com. I'll see you in game.